Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today on Fridays with Flora TGIF and today we are still talking buttermilk and if you joined us two weeks ago we talked about buttermilk bread and we made a really great oat honey sandwich bread. Today we are going to use up the rest of our buttermilk in a no need grainy rustic wheat loaf. So we're going to start it today. We're going to actually finish it tomorrow. It sits overnight. So if you're following along with me, just know that. And if you're going, if you're uh, watching this um, some other time, just know that this is kind of a two-day process. And it's no need, which, you know, I don't know if any of you have tried no need bread. It's not necessarily like no work at all. There is some, uh, some work you have to do with the dough, but it's nothing compared to what dough usually entails. Like our previous dough from two weeks ago had to knead with a kneading hook for about eight minutes. Imagine if that was you, you know, with your arms and your knuckles kneading it. Um, that's not what this is. Um, you make the dough, you let it sit overnight, um, and then you work it just a little bit, it does a lot of sitting. So I would recommend that if you have a weekend where you're just, you know, doing stuff around the house, I mean, frankly, all, that's all a lot of us are doing right now, thanks to COVID. Um, but yes, a, just a quieter weekend where you can just work on it, let it sit, work on a little bit, let it sit, and then bake it. The other thing you're gonna need for no need dough is a Dutch oven. So what that, th what that is is a pot with it's like a metal enamel pot. Le Creuset is a really great brand. Um, I really recommend that you have one Dutch oven in your repertoire. It's amazing for braising and it's great for um, cooking up no need bread. This uses buttermilk and I am also making it with heavy duty whole wheat flour. Um, we're watching our sugar here. Uh, my husband has to watch his sugar now. His doctor kind of told him so. So if we are doing a carb, I try to sneak in grains any way I can. The grain um, slows down your body's uh, absorption of sugar. So um, anytime you can sneak grain into a carb, it's good for you. This is heavy duty grain. If you don't like that much grain, um, I would ease up on the liquid in this recipe and do maybe half whole wheat, half regular flour, half whole wheat, half bread flour. You can mix, mix and match your flours. So just know that and we're gonna have some fun. So we're in it for the long haul today with our buttermilk, yay. And I think after today, I will have no more buttermilk and then we can move on to other projects that are listed and slotted in the content calendar. So anyway, join me today in the kitchen and it's really pretty much you're joining me all weekend because that's slow and slow. That's how this process is. So anyway, come with me and we'll have some fun. Okay, so for this like lazy girl, no need buttermilk, like rustic buttermilk bread, um, we're gonna mix it all kind of in a bowl and just let it sit for about 12 to 18 hours. So this is two cups of really good quality whole wheat flour. I use the King Arthur whole wheat flour. Um, I'm, I want a grainy bread for this. I am gonna cut it with about a cup's worth of regular flour. You can also mix in bread flour if you'd like. It just kind of lightens it a little bit, um, but it is predominantly whole wheat. To this, we're gonna add some salt, two and a half teaspoons, and I'm using kosher. We use um, diamond kosher. It's milder and has a little bit more umami than uh, other kosher salts. Now we're gonna add our yeast. Quarter cup. Sorry. A quarter teaspoon, apologies. Quarter teaspoon, not a quarter cup. Quarter teaspoon, which isn't a lot, but this is gonna sit. What's gonna work for this is time. All right, so as in most recipes, you're gonna mix your dry ingredients. So I've got just a fork. All right, so to this, we're gonna add a half a cup of buttermilk. One cup of warm water. This 
is going to be the consistency of like a pancake batter. So this is about a half cup more water. Just I'm even going to splash in a little bit more buttermilk. It's almost like pancake batter. This is going to depend on what flours you use as to how much liquid you're going to need. As I mentioned before, whole wheat flour, the bran soaks up more liquid. So. If you use regular bread flour, the full three cups, you're not going to need this much liquid. You're going to stick to that one cup of warm water, half a cup of buttermilk. I'll add a screenshot to the end of some of these notes as far as measurements. So yes, is this, does this look like bread dough right now? No, not at all. But it's got to sit now for about 12 to 18 hours. So this will be ready for me uh, mid-morning tomorrow. So this is something you do a day before you want it baked off. You're gonna cover this with plastic wrap and a lint-free towel and let it sit somewhere where it's gonna be undisturbed throughout the night for the full 12 to 18 hours. Okay, it's been 18 hours. And that's our dough. It's going to feel a lot like pancake batter. It's very bubbly. And now we need to work it into some dough. So when we talk about this as being like no need bread, it's not necessarily true. There is some work to be done, but it's not like heavy duty kneading for eight to 10 minutes. So <clears throat> first things first, and I'm kind of looking at this surface as like two surfaces. One, we're gonna flour the surface and then the other half I'm gonna keep clean. So on this side, I'm going to put some flour down. But try not to, I mean, this is about as much flour you wanna do for this first phase. You don't wanna to add too much flour to this, believe it or not. And you're going to kind of Puddle it. See how loose it is? I know it's hard to believe this is going to turn into some sort of bread, but. And like I said, this is 18 hours, so it's been sitting here left alone. You can certainly smell the fermentation that's been happening. So what you're gonna do is take an edge and turn it in. Take an edge and turn it in. Take an edge and turn it in. Take an edge, turn it in. And you're gonna do this about, oh, I don't know, 12 to 16 times until it has some kind of structure to it. It's starting to have a little bit. When I mean by some structure, it's it's starting to hold. Try to use as little flour as possible, but I am gonna put a little bit of flour on my fingers to loosen up some of this dough. I lost count, viewers, sorry. So I'm gonna go one more time around because it is starting to hold a little bit. We're gonna scoot it over to the cleaner side. Now for this side, you're going to generally see cover this with flour. And you're going to pull, bring back, pull, bring back. And turn, pull, bring back, turn, pull, bring back, turn, pull, bring back, turn, pull, bring back, 
turn. Oh, we're just gonna work the dough ever so slightly. A little more flour. It's starting. What you're doing is you're just working the gluten a little bit to get a little bit of tension. Pull, pull, and turn it. Pull, 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 turn it. I'm gonna go a couple more times. You need it to be a taut ball. It's not quite there yet. See, it's getting a little bit of a bounce back. That's good. Now, it's gotta rise for two hours. So for its next rise, if you have a proofing bread basket, um, use that. I do not. So I have a flour sack towel that I use. And it's important if you're going to use a towel to make sure it is like a flour sack or cotton, no lint, and generously flour this. And then using your bench <laughs> my bench scraper, get this in a ball. And plop it in there. Lightly cover it with some plastic wrap and cover it and let it sit for two more hours. Okay, so Things might start moving really fast right now because it's been two hours with our dough and <clears throat> just just under two hours, like an hour 45. So what that means is we're close to time to bake things off. So I wanted to just pause and let you know like what's going on in case we're moving too fast because things get really hot and uh, you don't want things to cool down. Plus you need to be really careful and not burn yourself. Um, so the oven, I've heated up to 500 degrees. Super, super hot oven. And make sure one of your racks is in the lower half of your oven. And once my oven lets me know that she's at 500, I'm going to grab my Dutch oven. So this is what's important with no need, no need bread is the Dutch oven. <clears throat> so I have it ready and I'm going to cover it with some olive oil on the inside and cover it and I'm going to heat up the Dutch oven for about 20 minutes once the oven is at 500. Once it's been hot for 20 minutes, I'm going to pull it out, sprinkle some cornmeal on the bottom and then we'll transfer the dough in there, cover it, lower the oven and bake it off. So all the magic then happens within this Dutch oven. Okay, oven says it's at time. I've got some olive oil spray. Give it a good spray. All this is gonna do is help with the sear, but also keep things from sticking. And it goes for 20 minutes. I also wanna give you a peek on what's going on with our dough. So you can see that it's more than doubled. So we're gonna gently plop this in to our Dutch oven. Timer went off. You have a very hot Dutch oven, so be very careful. Oh yeah, cornmeal. I actually don't have cornmeal, so I am just putting a little bit of semolina. It'll just prevent sticking. And moving quickly. I'm 
to slit the top. Put the top on using oven mitts. You're gonna put it back in, cook for 25 to 30 minutes with the lid on, but you're gonna lower the temp to 450. Okay, so my timer just went off. It's been about 25 minutes. So now what you do is you take the cover off. Oh, oh baby. And you wanna just kind of brown it up a little bit. 12 minutes-ish and make sure that middle is cooked. All right, we're at about 12, 13 minutes. Oh, nice and golden. Smells great. Get your bread out. I'm gonna make sure you know it's got a nice thump. A little bounce back. That's how you know it's all cooked in there. So you're gonna let that cool for about an hour and then we can uh, break into that. All right, this baby is cooled and looking absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? So it's not, it's not completely like no need, like I mentioned, and like you saw, there's a little bit of work to be done in with the dough, but um, overall it's a, it's a pretty lazy, easy, just kind of throw it together, let it sit overnight, do a little bit of mixing with it, let it sit again, throw it in the Dutch oven, let the Dutch oven do all the work. So I'm not gonna cut into this because this is actually for dinner and I don't wanna spoil the pretty loaf, but, um, it's a denser bread because we used whole wheat flour, so um, probably didn't get the rise that I would have liked. I think if you know if you end up using bread flour, white flour, you probably get a little bit more of a, a lighter, um, poofier bread. This is very dense. It feels very heavy because of all that bran in there, but. Um, here's to eating healthier in 2021. So get ready, gang. We're gonna have a lot of healthier meals on the blog and in the videos and all that stuff. We'll see how long we can uh, keep that New Year's resolution going. So join me as we try to, uh, you know, ease up on the carbs, have a lot more vegetables, ease up on the dairy, um, but pump up the flavor. So anyway, uh, thanks for joining me today on Fridays with Flora. Enjoy the weekend, enjoy the new year, uh, stay safe out there, please be well, and please subscribe down below. Also, just want to note, um, it may be cold and wintry in half of the country, but that doesn't mean that you can't think about your garden. So I just want to urge you, if you're getting kind of depressed by those gray days, um, get your gardening journals out, get your gardening books. I have some books on sale on Amazon that can help you plan for native flowers, whether it's containers, small gardens, or just regular gardens in the Midwest. Um, the container pot garden book is uh, coast to coast, so it doesn't matter what city you're in. There's, a, there's some native flowers you can put in a pot on your porch or balcony in that book. Check it out on Amazon, and also I, um, I put together a, uh, a pretty extensive list of seed catalogs per, with the lens of uh, native flowers on the blog. So I just want to urge you to, you know, kind of not get depressed about winter and start looking at colorful seed catalogs. Start thinking about your garden now and how you're going to help the bees and the butterflies. So anyway, that's my final pitch. Have a great week, y'all. Get baking and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye.